I'm going to take a look at the use of SeqMug to analyse some ChIP-seq data, in this case a single ChIP-seq experiment which is a histone modification enrichment. I've loaded the data into SeqMug and because the data was single-ended I've used the import option to extend all of the reads by in this case 150 base pairs. What this means is that instead of just looking at the tag that was sequenced from the end of each fragment what I'm looking at is an extended view of each fragment which is a more realistic assessment of what was actually pulled down on the original chip. You could get the same effect by doing paired end sequencing and then joining it up but if you have single end sequencing then this will actually make your peaks look more realistic and make the data easier to interpret. We're going to look at this initially by doing uh, a peak detection on here using the Contig probe generator in SeqMug to see what we get. So to actually start doing the quantitation in this data I'm going to go to data and define probes. I'm going to use the Contig probe generator and in this case I only have one data set to analyze so I'm going to select that. If I had more data sets I'd probably want to select all of the data sets I wanted to analyze in this session and use all of their combined data to define peaks. I'm going to use all reads because this isn't a directional chip, so it doesn't matter there. I'm going to ignore duplicates. I'm going to say that I want contigs which are at least 200 bases in length, and that if they are closer than 50 bases in, uh, it, there's only less than 50 bases between them, they'll get joined together. The most important thing to define when creating contigs in this way is the depth of enrichment that you want to see before you create probes over it. Now in this case this is actually a fairly low coverage experiment so I need to set my depth quite high in order to get the actual number of reads which are required to be overlapping high enough that I'm actually going to pick out peaks. So in this case I'm going to take a tenfold coverage which is going to equate to six reads deep in order to start and finish my peaks. I'm going to create my probes. I shall see a warning saying I'm going to wipe out my existing probes which is okay and it will go through and do the probe construction from there. My probes have now been constructed but I need to quantitate them in order to see what's going on. So I'm going to start with I'm going to do a simple read count quantitation. I'm going to log transform it and I'm going to count my duplicate reads only once so I'm not going to uh, use the Gini duplicate information and I'm going to go ahead and quantitate. You can see that SeqMonk quantitates really quite quickly through this data, so that's all the peak detection and quantitation done, and now I uh, can see that it's expanded the view to show me the quantitation underneath the original data. So now you can see wherever I've got a bar, that's where it picked out a set region of enrichment, and the height of the bars represent the amount of sequence that was in there. Here you can see it finds pairs of, a pair of enriched features and even relatively lowly enriched features still get pulled out and discriminated between. So if nothing else I now have a reasonable detection of peaks across my data set and I can start looking at those in more detail. Once I've done some quantitation there are a few basic things I can find out about my data. So one really useful thing to look at is the distribution of quantitated values across the entire data set. So to find that I can click on the data set that I'm interested in. When I select a data set you'll notice that my genome view up here changes to show me the quantitation across the entire genome and if I just change the levels a bit I can see now if there are any hotspots across my genome for enrichment of this mark. So I can see it's quite sparse across the X chromosome but otherwise it's fairly evenly distributed across the entire genome. What I've got a, when I've got a data set that I've selected, I can now right mouse click on that and say show probe value histogram. And that will now bring me up a little histogram showing me the range of probe values that I see across the genome. And in this case it's interesting in that I can see that this is not a single continuous distribution. What I've actually got is one distribution for sort of fairly low numbers of reads and then a second distribution where it peaks again. So there's two separate parts to this distribution. One reason this might have happened might be that if I have two enriched regions next to each other then maybe this first part represents one region of enrichment and this represents two because I'm not correcting for the length of the probes in each case. I'm allowing it to construct pro uh, probes of whatever length is appropriate and then counting total reads within that area. To have a look at that I can see if the length distribution of my probes also shows a similar distribution. So if I select the all probes probe list and say show probe length histogram. In this case I can see that 
The vast majority of my probes in here are fairly short, so running up to maybe 600 bases, but that there is a significant number of probes where the enriched region is much larger, even going up to several kilobases by the end. So one thing I could look at then is to say, well, is there a difference in the distribution of lengths for this more enriched region? To find that out, I can just do a simple values filter on this. So if I say filter, filter on values, and filter each probe individually, I can say I want to find values which are greater than 6, which is about where the middle of this distribution was in my one data set. I can now see my value above 6 list. And if I now construct a new probe length histogram from that, I can see if it looks any different. So in this case now I have two histograms of probe length to compare and I can see that they are different. So in my original one using all probes I have a, quite a lot of probes in the range sort of 180 to 300 bases and then it descends smoothly from there. In my one where I'm looking just at the higher values I can see that my sort of peak length of probe is nearer a kilobase and that actually my shortest ones are only down to 300 so certainly by looking at those higher the probes with the higher counts I have taken out the shorter probes. If I want to look at this more rigorously I can actually go back and re-quantitate my data correcting for the probe length to see what happens there. So if I go back to data and quantitation I'm not going to redefine the probes so my existing list will still be kept and I'll still have my original value above 6 list but I can now go back and do a read count quantitation I'm now going to correct for total read count uh, sorry, I'm not going to correct for total read count, I'm going to correct for probe length uh, log transform the count and don't count duplicates so now what I'm going to get is a measure of density of probes not just a raw count and now if I go back to my all probes list and look at the probe value histogram interestingly I can see that there are still two peaks in here a low density peak and a high density peak if I look at my values above 6 and do the same thing I can see that my low density peak now disappears so that those values although there is a shift in the overall length of these that's not what accounts for the difference that we're seeing and that there is actually a difference in density as well other things that I can do in here if I've got my set of probes and I've filtered them down if I now want to see uh, which genes these are associated with I can see that in a lot of cases these probes sit immediately upstream of genes which would make sense for uh, the fact that this is a H3K4 trimethylation so if I wanted to get a list of these higher density probes I can go and do a report I'll create an annotated probe report I'm going to annotate with a surrounding or downstream mRNA I'm going to say it can be up to two kilobases downstream and then create my report and in this way I can now get a list of all of my high density regions and I can also see the genes that these are associated with so in a fairly sort of quick order I can do a simple analysis of this data set and from this point on I can now go and extend this to other data sets or look into this in more detail but hopefully this gives you an idea of some simple things that you can do